Speaking about money messing things up as well. I've been getting bizarre emails from this woman. And I don't know how much to believe this woman because she's a total psychopath. I mean, she's an obvious sociopath. She's made up all sorts of stuff about me. She's one of these people who trolls me and posts all this misinformation about me and all this stuff that isn't true. So I don't know how to believe anything she says. But she keeps sending me information about or, or complaints about the development down at Nightcap in New South Wales that Gunham and AB and a few people are doing and I think a few people have bought into. And like I said, I don't know how to believe anything this woman says, but you know, the, the emails are persistent. So if possible, I'd like some of the investors of Nightcap to possibly email me. Um, just let me know how you're going. What, what's going on there? Are you happy? Is everything working out? Um, I'd just like to know because all I'm hearing, I mean, I hear good things from the developers and I hear incredibly negative things from this woman and her followers. And, but I don't hear anything from the investors themselves. I'd like to hear from the investors so they can just tell me what's going on with Nightcap. Because I just had Gunnam on to talk about it. Well, we mentioned we were talking about other things, but I had him on to talk about Nightcap once or twice, probably a year, maybe two years ago. Hi folks, on a lot of the reports I've been bringing you lately, I've been talking about the need to treaty with the tribes and the benefits we can get from that and you know what's really going on here with sovereignty in this country. Now we're in a pretty desperate situation at the moment folks and when I've been presenting this to people, a lot of the comments I've been seeing is, oh you're saying give the country back to the Aboriginals, this is going to achieve nothing. Well no, that's not what I'm talking about at all. And for a start, as I've mentioned before on the reports, there is no such thing as an Aboriginal. But in order to talk about this, um, I've brought someone here to, uh, to explain things to you who knows the situation pretty well. And it's a pretty important guy that I've got here. This is a friend of mine called Gunnam Batty Jakamara. That's his tribal name. He has a, a white person's name as well. You may know him as Mark McMurtry. He's made a, a reasonable amount of noise about this sort of stuff in the past. But Mark's a very specific man. He's a very, um, a very unique sort of an individual. There's, a, there's actually a, a story, there's a prophecy that exists in tribal culture that there will one day be a man who is a white-skinned man but has the blood of both tribes and knows the law of both realms and will be able to bring the people together and bring the country back to the people. The tribal elders all believe this is Gunambati Jakamara. And having come to know the man over the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, I must have known the man by now, um, I've come to believe that this is, is true as well. So I brought him onto this report today to just explain the situation of sovereignty in this country and to, uh, to show you what's really going on here and just to try to explain it in terms you can understand. And I just want to give the floor to you, Gunnam, and just tell us what's really going on here. What is the situation? Where do we stand? And well, how, how can we get out of the mess we're in? But what I think we should be talking about is how do we get income, you know, it, it, it's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We need to, need to spill the land a bit. So, yeah, anything like that with solutions as well. Um, um. One, one solution is really to get, to get out of the system. Hi folks. I'm just here again with Gunnambati Jakamara. I thought I'd bring you an update on what's going on with the, the tribal land. There's been a few questions. I'll give you a little bit of a pan around here to have a look at what's going on. This is the land we're talking about. For anybody who's familiar with Australia, there's Mount Warning over there. There's been a few questions, so we're going to try to clear up some of the stuff. There's, this land has a little bit of a history. There's a little bit of bad press with one of previous owners, and I've had a few emails and a few people questioning what's going on and stuff. So uh, Gunnam wants to sort all that out as well and tell you exactly what's going on here and what they're kind of looking at, the sort of people they want to have involved and what the vision is here. So I'll hand you over to Gunnam a little bit and uh, wrong way and uh, he can tell you a little bit about what's, what's going on. 
So give us a bit of a spiel on what's going on here with all this gun. I think Gunham's got a good heart, and I trust this. I trust this uh, project. I think it will be good. Hi, folks. I'm just sitting here with Gunham, talking about uh, what's going on with the land and the current situation here in Australia. We're just going to talk about how things are developing down there and, and where it's all going, and what we can do with our precarious future at the moment. What do you think about uh, what's going on at the moment, Gunham? I think that um, this is a time in the history of mankind where everyone who walks this planet needs to have their wits about them. And um, yeah. I haven't really looked into it much since then because I'm not involved in the project, folks. I mean, they said they'd give me a block there, and it's wonderful. Okay, sure, I'll have a block there. I mean, not that I'll ever go and live there or do anything with it, but sure, it's a great... I mean, it could be a place for my sister to retreat to, or if it gets to a point where the whole system turns completely pear-shaped, there could be a place to bug out to. But yeah, okay, no worries. But that's my only interest in it. That's all I've really known about it. I've only visited once or twice. And I'd just like to hear from the investors, hear if they're happy, just hear what's going on from them themselves. Because, uh, like I said, all I'm getting is these weird emails from this woman who I know to be a full-blown sociopath, just because some of the stuff she's said about me. She's tried to attack my landlord where I lived in Australia and all sorts of stuff. This is one of the most decent people you'll ever meet that she'd never met. She's trying to dox him and spread his address everywhere and she's trying to do what she can to hurt him because he was giving me somewhere to live. I mean, a total full-blown sociopath, this woman. For some reason, she's got on this, this hate fest. I mean, she honestly comes across like a jilted lover. It's, it's one of those sort of fatal attraction sort of things. And I've got no clue who this woman is. But anyway, yeah, so I thought I'd put that out there. So if you're one of the investors... Just give me a, an email, give me a call, let me know how you're going, if everything's working out. And yeah, that's about it I think folks. By the way, if you're going to come to my YouTube or my, my BitChute channel and just post hate, you know, just, just hatred. No conversation, just hatred and personal attacks and abuse. We have a block button now on BitChute. So if I come there and I see a comment that's just hatred, well, you can expect to be blocked, okay? Because I'm over it. I'm over the trolls. So I'm just going to hit that block button. If you haven't got communication skills, you don't want to talk about things, you've just come there to simply post hatred, distrust, or animosity, or accusations, or whatever. I'm not even going to debate you, I'm just going to hit the block button. So, be aware of that, folks. Max Egan, just to create a pen name. Like I said, I always used the name Max anyway, I always hated my middle name. I mean, I always hated my, my given name, so I never used it. I stopped using it back when I was a kid. So it's weird how spirit just concocted that for me to fly under the radar for so long until it was time for me to not fly under the radar, I guess. And now they've shut me down everywhere, like everywhere they've shut me down. But just for the record, I'm going to tell you my real name because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. I mean, like I said, it was just this thing that spirit guided me to do. And it's just a name anyway, but my actual given name is Richard. My middle name is Maxwell. My last name is Rowe. R-O-W-E. Richard Maxwell Rowe. That is my given name. But like I said, I've always used the name Max. I don't like the name Richard. I just... King Richard and... I, I just... No. I never liked it when I was a kid. So I stopped using that years and years ago and I don't answer to that name. But that's my real name. Richard Maxwell Rowe, folks. And I mean, I'm, I guess I'm Max Egan now and I'll always be Max Egan. 
Same as Jordan Maxwell will always be Jordan Maxwell, I guess. He, that's not his name either, I don't think. And, you know, a lot of people do this. But it's interesting how Spirit guided me to do that. Like I said, I'm not fussed about the name. It isn't about the name. It became a bit of a game, keeping it kind of hidden, you know. But, like, you know, it doesn't matter now. They know who I am anyway. And when I travel, it doesn't matter. It still comes up on the radar now because it's all biometric. It's all facial recognition and all that sort of shit. And it isn't because of any of that. It isn't because of names or any stuff like that that they close me down on Patreon or they close my bank accounts or anything like that. It's because they don't like what I'm doing. And when they closed down my bank account, basically the letter said that, you know, you're not the type of person that we want to have banking with our bank. <laughs> they didn't really give me any more details. I'm just not the type of person that they, they wish to do business with. And this Patreon said the same thing, you know, we're not willing to support you because you're promoting medical misinformation. I'm going to attempt to open up a Stripe account, which will, is something similar to PayPal. But um, for those who do wish to contribute, I do have a WISE account, a WISE bank account which is an online bank. I mean, you, it's easy to go and <clears throat> set up. But uh, it is easy to go and set up a WISE account online. And you can have instantaneous transfers between currency for no costs and all sorts of stuff. It's actually a good way if you buy stuff online and you're buying stuff from different places overseas, like if you're buying stuff in, in Euro or in US dollars or Australian dollars or yen or whatever, like if I, using Australian dollars, if I was to buy something from the US, then I have to also pay the currency exchange rate to do it. If I pay for it in US dollars, I've got to pay the currency exchange rate in Australian dollars. If I do it through WISE, I can simply change my Australian dollars into US currency within WISE, and there's no cost in doing it. Same if I want to buy something in Euro. If I want to buy something from Europe and it's in Euro, I can just easily change the currency to Euro there's a different whole new bank account number for it and you can pay for whatever you want in euros so it's actually a really good setup so but if you were to open up a wise account anybody who wishes to contribute because i know i did have a lot of subscribers and i've had a lot of people contact me saying they'd like to be able to send me a contribution and it has been quite difficult actually folks and i'm, I'm fast running out of money here in mexico because like i said they've just shut down everything now i've got this wise account People can contribute into that if you have a WISE account yourself. So that's an option as well. If you do want to do that, you could send me an email and uh, just put donation as the heading or whatever and um, I will get back to you and give you the WISE account details. And I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon, folks. Please take very good care until then. And again, if you can uh, offer any support at all, please write to me and I will give you the details of my WISE account and any support that anybody can offer at this time would be greatly appreciated and hopefully soon I will hopefully have the subscribe star or my stripe or something working anyway but they seemed seem to be going all out I think they've kind of blacklisted me and they seem to be going all out to ban me from all types of platforms at all where I may be possible to get any support so interesting times folks that's another thing that is so dangerous about this digital world when they lock you out they can lock you out of everything but anyway To be honest, I'm, you know, seriously thinking about packing it all in anyway. I can't really afford to do this anymore. I've spent my entire life savings for trying to wake the world up. I get a lot of complaints from people as well. Oh, look, he asked for donations, you know. Folks, I did this for eight years before I even set up that Patreon account for people to be able to offer regular subscriptions. And you still don't have to subscribe to get all the access of the website. You know, I've put a lot into it and I've done what I can to try to wake the world up. But I don't have any resources left. I did have, you know, all my SGs, all my guitars, all my stuff, but I've sold it all. I've got rid of everything. And I've just lived off my savings and off the stuff that I've had for the last eight, ten years while I've dedicated everything into trying to wake the world up. And it's been a full-time job. 
But now I've got nothing left. You know, all I can depend on is if people want me to keep going, if they do like the radio shows, if they want the films and they want me to keep going, I need help, I need support. You know, I'm down to nine stone now. I make enough money from the website to be able to pay my rent, put Petra in the car, and have about four meals a week. And, you know, that's not really a lot to ask. That's not really a lot. That's not really profiteering from anything. People ask, how does he get to travel all around the world and stay in all these exotic places? Well, the people who organise the gigs organise for me to fly their folks and they organise the accommodation. And most of them I don't even get paid for. You know, travelling's gruelling, folks. So let's say, yeah, look at Max, he's on a world tour. Look at last year or this year. I went to Mexico, I went to Philadelphia, I went to Ohio, I went to London, I went to Amsterdam, and I spoke in all those places. And that's gruelling. Doing all that travelling is gruelling. And out of all those five places that I spoke in, I got paid once. Once, folks. So it isn't like I do this and for wealth or anything like that. You know, people look at me and they put me up on this pedestal as this guru or whatever. No, folks, I got thrust into that position. That's the label that you people give me. Really, I'm just a social misfit. I'm a guitar player with attitude. I don't do authority. I don't do fear. I don't take a backward step to anybody. I just call things the way I see them. If people don't like it, hey, well, you don't like it. And for all those people that are worried about all the insults and stuff that I post on YouTube sometimes, really, really horrendous insults that I give people. Yeah, I do. If you're going to come and accuse me of things, folks, I'm going to make up an insult that is so over the top, so ridiculous that it borders on comedy. And I'm going to post it there so you can think about yourself. Because if you want to tangle with me when I'm feeling down or when I'm feeling in pain and you want to try to amplify that pain, I'll give you back ten times what you can give me. Because I want people to know that I am human. I do feel things and I do get angry. I really do, folks. I'm pissed off at this whole affair. I really am. I didn't want to do it, and I still don't want to do it. And, you know, I just did what I did. But, yeah, if you come at me, I'm going to come back at you. That's the way it is. I'm human. You know, I'm an empath, folks. I really feel for people, and I really care about people. And what I did coming out with what I said about Ken is one of the hardest things, possibly the hardest thing, I've ever had to do in my life. Certainly the hardest thing that I've had to do since I've been speaking out about people and speaking out about this system and trying to make some change in the world.